Darren and Anita on Music Evolution. And we're back. Welcome back. And we've got Ken Knox and actually Thomas Hunter in here as well. And I'm back with Melvin Steeles as well, too. And we were talking about Nigel Lewis and uh, Gary with DSG Records. And that's sort of how, what bring this together. But through Ken, because of Ken, it seems like I meet a lot of people through Ken. I don't know what it is. You know everybody, man. What is it about Detroit? I guess, you know. Like Melvin and I was talking earlier, Detroit puts out a lot of smart people. <laughs> oh, really? Lot, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. Of smart, yeah. intelligent yeah. people and a lot of intelligent artists. I just thought you were saying that because you were from Detroit. See, there goes Ken's that watch too. again. Y'all hear that beeping, don't you? I'm, I, you know, I got to <laughs> aggravate Ken. And Thomas over there, what's up, Thomas? Hey, Darren, how are you? I'm doing good, man. I tell you, to have you guys in here, I, I mean, before we get to what's going on, another Reach Out to Me is the new song that you guys have out, and it's the remix by Nigel Lewis as well, Lois. How do you say Lois. that? Is it Lois or Lois? Lois. Lois. I can't Lois. understand it. When, when you UK folks see this, you're going to be mad at me because I, ca I can't get it right. But McKinley Jackson, you guys have a connection there as well. Yes. W what is that with you guys? Well, McKinley is someone that my brother and I met at Atlantic Records back in around uh, 1978. Uh, McKinley uh, produced an album on the Impressions called This Time, and we just hit it off. Uh, Henry Allen flew my brother and, out and, and I and me out to California and my brother had to go back and work in the steel mill but I was a teacher so I spent an extra week and I stayed with McKinley and Shirley Jones at that time and uh, a bond formed and McKinley was the missing link. My brother and I were good songwriters but we wanted to take it to an, the next level and McKinley was that missing link. And we worked on a project with the uh, first choice. We had a huge disco and house music song called uh, Love Thing that Chubb Rock sampled. Right. And came up with Treat Him Right and he had to give me a piece of the rock. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Hey, yeah, Chubb Rock. Had to give up some rock, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I love it. I love it. I like uh, but uh, McKinley is someone we have reunited after years of being separated. And we're working on a project. We're working on this Earl Young, uh, Daryl Grant project. And we were surprised to find out that I, I heard Ken Knox's song and I said wow that sounded good and then I was talking to McKinley and McKinley said well I know Ken Knox and he arranged he made a three-way and we talked on the telephone and we have been in touch with each other ever since and now we're seeing that the possibility of doing what we do collectively right we create more opportunities for all the people who interact with us because this music that we do is timeless. See, that's my evolution right. thing, that music right. evolution. Yeah. And if we do what we do with some of these younger right. people, we're going to get a more contemporary interpretation. But a good song is at the bottom of what you do. And if you have good songs that say something. Right. A lot of these songs today, the songwriters are not saying anything. The beat is there, but we want to get people to think. And we want to write songs kind of like the country, western songs. Right, right. They tell great stories. Well, you know, it's, Ken, uh, it's fun. I want to, before we get started in, I want to go to the McKinley thing. But Greg Perry, uh, who was a songwriter with Holland Dozier and Holland, uh, with Edna Wright married to now, but he said the same thing, and this was probably four or five years ago. We were right. talking about songwriting, and country music is one of the few musics left that still has a, a story in the song right. or, or a meaning to the song, and really it, it is nowadays somewhat. And people that. need that. When you, being an educator, and I listen to these songs, schools are dropping the ball. Right. These kids don't speak standard English. Right. They don't have extensive vocabularies, but they, that's why they have these 
beats. Right, right. They can't say it. But they have. But if we can combine those beats with these great songs, we're going to take this evolution to a higher level. And this is the unique opportunity that has presented itself to us and why my wife and I drove all the way down here to Charlotte so that we can meet and talk and greet and collaborate to make something great. Right. Well, the way, uh, as Melvin explained it, McKinley, uh, Thomas and I went to see um, The Temptations. The temp and I got to meet McKinley yeah. there. Right, you, you met McKinley there. But before that, I hadn't seen McKinley in probably 35, 38 years. And because McKinley, and I'll tell this now, you know, only a few people know, <laughs> but when um, the chairman of the board was uh, putting the, the band together for, for, for the tours. Uh, McKinley was one of the ones who stuck by me because the, the manager did not want, he didn't, he, he didn't want me. He didn't want no Ken Knox. No, no Ken Knox, no, 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 you're not good enough, you're not this and that. McKinley said, hold on, let me work with him. And from, from, from doing that, I never had a chance to thank McKinley right. till about after we saw him here in Charlotte, and he's the reason I'm sitting where I'm where I am now, and plus General, and and, and Danny. But the thing is, um, getting to the records, uh, McKinley said I'm gonna hook you up with uh, Melvin Steeles, uh, the guy who wrote uh, uh, "Could It Be I'm Falling Love." Oh man, it's a great song. So he said not. He got us both on the phone. Right. Said, now, y'all remember this day. I hooked y'all up. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, he might want a piece of steels and knocks <laughs> like you got the rock. That's why he said it. So we're going to have it. But getting to the songs. Thomas wrote this song called Reach Out to Me. Right. And he brought it to me and said, Ken, I got a song. What do you think? Uh, I said, I like it. Let's, let's try this and try that. And. I put this in here, put that in there, and which gave me co-writers. And uh, <laughs> Thomas, that was awful nice, man. Yeah. So anyway, uh, <laughs> basically, so the song we 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 played it for people around here, and they were they were feeling it. Right. So I received a email from Gary Vanderbush over in, in the UK. Right. That's the DSG. DSG Records. He said, "Listen, I." like that record i like that song let's talk so we talked and he said listen let me do this i'm gonna bring nigel lois in i said nigel lois who is that he said well nigel lois has sold about 14 million records wow. worldwide since the 90s but he does the remixing thing he That's remixed it says. now all of a sudden our records start taking off over there um told Thomas about it and he said man I'm with you and so uh, so the whole deal is it, it what what is done for us because of the level of records that's that's out, out here, there yeah. you know this song is up there okay. well you know both of you guys though on Amazon UK right now your song and the uh, and and the song you guys have, they're on the on the on the Amazon UK charts. Yeah, also the UK Soul chart. I'm let Thomas talk about his feeling about it. Yeah. Well, Thomas, this is what I want to ask you first, because of you coming up with "Reach Out to Me." H how did how did that come about in your mind? You know, a lot of times people, Darren. A lot of times people ask me what comes first, the music or the lyrics. And sometimes the music comes first, and sometimes the lyrics come first. But in this particular case. I was doodling around with uh, music and patterns and and most of the times when I write, if I do the music first, the music speaks to me and the lyrics present themselves. Right. And so I'll craft that way. And uh, this particular song is about uh, people being there for each other. Right. You know, reach out to me and I'll be there. there. 
It's, it's I'm going to remember like that from now on. When I'm broke down on the side of the road at 4 o'clock <laughs> in the morning, I'm calling Thomas Hunter. Thomas. Well, that's, that's commercial. That's triple A. That's triple A. Hey, they triple see, A. They see me catch on, walk on by, they say, Darren, they'll drive them. Oh, bye. They'll listen step on to, the gas. Listen to <laughs> right. So what do you think, what Ken was asking, what do you think about what's going on now with the remix and, and, and all that? It's, well, it's happening. Um, I really like the remix. It's really nice. It's yeah. of what was there and um, uh, I love them both well you know being the writer it's right, always yeah. good things when you can yeah. hear they're like your, your babies music being, so, uh, it's just like having yeah. children it's yeah. like it's Dolly Parton when you can see your, that. Your, your kids grow yeah. and what's most rewarding to me as a writer is when people can hear my music and like it right. feel something from it because that's what it's done. That's like it's what we were talking song. about earlier. Yeah. Right. It's all about the song. It's not about me. It's about the song and how the song makes people feel and exactly. how it can make them remember experiences in their life at different periods in their in, life. In the life. True. And that's uh, that gives me a, a, a feeling that I can't express. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good just, way to put know, it. I'm just really grateful for the opportunity. The way Thomas is talking right now, you're going to make me cry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. No, nah, really. You make me but it, like it, 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 it is an awesome, <laughs> it is an awesome song. Awesome song. And that's what's going on with you guys right now, plus out on the road. And you can find out more about Ken Knox and Thomas and, and the whole group at KenKnoxCompany.com. Melvin Steeles, Melvin, it was a pleasure again, My sir. Pleasure. And you can find more about Melvin Steeles and his brother as well, Mervin, at Steel's Brothers, and that's B-R-O-S, as in Brothers, SteelBrothersMusic.com, and we have links to all that as well. And Thomas, yeah. Mr. Knox. Thank you. Uh, I thank you so much, and you need to check. He's got like this watch going off constantly. You're a very important man, evidently. You look, I don't have my phone. Oh, it's his wife. Ear. That's what it is. <laughs> no, just kidding. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, folks. It is a music evolution. That's what we're calling it. Darren and Anita, A-N-D dot, uh, dot com. Darren and Anita dot com. We got links to all that. We'll have links to these guys and all that's going on right there so you can find out more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again down the road. Darren and Anita, a music evolution. Darren Henley here. Be sure to join Anita and I on the radio. It's a music evolution. Music from today and yesterday's artists, up and coming artists, artist interviews, great conversation with Anita and I. Fun and entertaining. For more information on how to find an affiliate near you or to listen online, visit DarrenAndAnita.com.